So the bonus question on our quiz was to find the product of this long string of fractions. We've got nine fractions that we're multiplying. There's a hard way to do this, which is to multiply all the tops and then multiply all the bottoms and divide those two products. And that would be very difficult and time consuming. The better way is to remember from math that multiplying fractions is the easiest possible thing you can do with fractions. And the key is I can cancel any common factors I have between the numerator and the denominator, the top and the bottom of the fraction. And so if you look over here, for example, I've got a 2 here. And I can cancel it out with a 2 over here. 3's cancel. 6's cancel. 9's cancel. 5's cancel. And you'll notice these don't have to be right next to each other to cancel. I'm canceling anywhere on the top to anywhere on the bottom, as long as they're a product. Um, let's see, I've got an 8. A 4 can cancel here. The 7 can cancel here. And when I'm all said and done, I have a 1 left over, and I have a 3 left over, and so my answer is 1 third. There's my solution. And this is a good segue into the topic, and this is our Master Objective 1.8, um, doing unit conversions using what's called the unit cancellation method, because really it uses that same exact process. And you've, can you've learned how to cancel units before, so this is really nothing new. It's a nice review, and we're going to practice this, because in physics we use units all the time, and we need to know how to convert things from one thing to another. All right, I'm going to start out with a simple example, and we're going to convert 60 miles per hour into feet per second. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to write down 60 miles per hour as a fraction first. So I've got 60 miles, and I'm going to abbreviate my units. Don't write them all out. 60 miles per hour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by any conversion factors I need to get into feet. I need to convert miles into feet, and I need to convert hours into seconds. All right, let's work on the miles first. Well, in miles, so I'm going to multiply this by another conversion factor. Well, in one mile, and you notice I'm putting the miles on the bottom to cancel out with these miles on top. There's my cancellation. Top to bottom cancellation, just like when we're multiplying here, right? So top to bottom cancellation. And in one mile, how many feet are there? Well, there's 5,280 feet in a mile. So there's my feet that I was looking for. All right, that's my feet. Now I've got to take my hours and convert to seconds. All right, well, and the hours on the bottom, so I'm going to cancel this out by putting an hour on top. So I've got one hour on top is 60 minutes. There goes my hours. I'm going to knock those out. Now I've got minutes that I need to cancel. And to cancel out the minutes, I'm going to put how many minutes? I've got one minute. And my conversion factor is one minute is 60 seconds. All right, and so now my minutes are gone. And you'll notice the units that I have left here are seconds on the bottom, which I was looking for, and feet. So I've got feet and seconds now in the numerator and denominator. To calculate my final answer, I need to I've got the 60 to multiply by the 5280 up top. These are in my numerator. In my denominator, I've got a 60 and a 60. So how would you do this? Well, it's just, I'm just going to rewrite this. You don't need to do this. I would actually be pulling out a calculator right now if this is on a quiz or test, and I would just be cranking this out. I'm going to show you how to do that in a nice way. Um, but the math we need to do is we need to do 60 times 5280. Divide that by 60 times 60 in the denominator. This is going to cause a problem. Many of you might be tempted to do this, and the answer you'd get on your calculator if you type this in just as I've shown you would be wrong. Because you do left to right operations using PEMDAS, and I would do the multiplication of the 60 and the 5280, and then you divide by the 60. And when you hit this multiplication here on your calculator, this is like you're multiplying into the numerator again, and you'd end up multiplying this fraction instead of uh, dividing it. And so two ways to handle that. One way is to actually use parentheses like so. But a better way to do this on your calculator, the fastest way, is I would just do 60 times 5280. Now divide by 60. And I have to divide by another 60. Type that in your calculator, and you will get a correct answer. And the answer you're going to get is 88 feet per second. All right. So 60 miles per hour is 88 feet per second. So let's just review. Here's our process. First, we started by writing out the numbers of fraction. We took our 60 miles per hour and wrote it 60 miles over one hour. 
and then we just write down one by one conversion factors to cancel out our units to get to the units that we need. As we uh, multiply each one, we can cancel out the units along the way until our final answer is going to have the units in the case up above in feet divided by seconds. After we've done all of our canceled out our units, we can just go ahead and multiply the tops and divide by the bottoms. And by top and bottom, of course, I mean numerator and denominator in the fraction. Memorize this one. This is a great one to use um, later on. You'll see when we get miles per hour numbers, which are common units that we like to speak in as everyday individuals. But in physics circles, you would use feet per second. So we're, we're pretty frequently talking to normal people using miles per hour, and then we'll need to convert those numbers to feet per second. So here's a one-step uh, conversion factor you can, you can use to do that. Now let's convert 60 miles per hour into meters per second. Well, I can do the whole process over again. Or I know 60 miles per hour is 88 feet per second, so I'm just going to write down. What I'm going to convert now is the feet. And I know uh, a feet to meter conversion. I know that there's 3.28 feet, that's rounded to three significant digits, in one meter. So now I can cancel out my feet, and I'm left with meters per second. Simple as that. You can simply divide 88 divided by 3.28, and if you're doing that on a calculator, you'll find out it's 26.83, and this is meters per second. And the question is, is this a good answer? And I would say no, because the units are great. That's what I was looking for, meters per second. But your rounding is a little bit uh, off here. And the question is, how many significant digits? Well, our 60, depending on how you look at it, it could be one significant digit. Or if you said it's 60 miles per hour exactly, maybe it's two significant digits. Um, so that's at least two significant digits, I would say. When I say 60, I mean 60. Our conversion factor is three significant digits. So we've got two versus three. So technically, we would round this to two significant digits. And we'd round this. Here's our two digits. And there's our eight is going to be the rounding digit. So the eight is going to bump our 26 up to 27. So here's our final answer, 27 meters per second. And if you did decide, all right, well, if I really mean that it's 60.0 miles per hour, I, you know, I wouldn't take off any points if you decided to add one more digit of precision to this. I tend to use three significant digits when I'm doing a quiz or a test, and that's the standard I use. On WebAssign, if you do WebAssign assignments with me, you definitely want to use three significant digits on everything. Let's convert 60 miles per hour to kilometers per hour. I can start from any of these points, because these are all equal values, 60 miles per hour, or 88 feet per second, or 27 meters per second. It's up to you to decide which one you want to start from, and you want to think, sort of think about which one is going to give you the fastest conversion. Um, well, the kilometers per hour is, is metric, so you have meters and, and time, you have distance and time units. So I would say, I would argue that you can go for the meters per second, convert meters into kilometers, and seconds into hours. Or it wouldn't be too hard, I don't think, to go right from 60 miles per hour, because we've already got hours down here. We go from miles into meters. I'm going to go with the miles to meters conversion. So I'm going to take 60 miles, and I use MI to distinguish from M for meters, 60 miles per one hour. Now, I need to convert miles into meters. So I'm going to go miles to feet first. One mile is 5,280 feet. And then I'm going to go from feet into meters. Because I know there's 3.28 feet in one meter. All right? And so now my feet will be gone. And I'll be left with, I've got meters on top. And I've got hours on the bottom. So that's, that's how many meters per hour you're doing. But I need kilometers per hour. So I need to convert meters into kilometers. All right, well, there, I know the, how meters compare to kilometers. Uh, well, either there's one kilometer in 1,000 meters, or there's 1,000 kilometers in one meter. Which is it? Well, kilometers are really big, and meters are small. So it's going to be one kilometer equals 1,000 meters. Remember, the k, k means 1,000. All right, And so my meters are gone, and I have kilometers per hour. Those are my final units that I was looking for. So if we multiply the tops and bottoms, I've got, and this is a great, another great example of how to use your calculator in the most effective way. This is what I would type in. 60 times 5280 divided by 3.28 
and divided by a thousand. All right, both of these are dividing into the top, so do divide, divide. Fastest way to do it, you don't need to use any parentheses if you, if you do it this way. And my calculation, and I'm going to round this to, let's see, how many significant digits? Let's go with three significant digits again. It's 96.6 .6 kilometers per hour. And I think that's the way in Canada, if you look on the signs, they use KM slash H for their abbreviation for kilometers per hour. And that's my answer, 96.6 .6 or around 97 if you're using two significant digits. All right, so those are th three nice examples of unit conversions. All right, one number that I can never remember, the third digit on, is going gallons into liters, and that was one of the ones on your table of conversions. Let's actually figure it out. So I've got one gallon. And remember, I'm going to put this over a one, okay? And so now, how can I go from gallons into liters? And really, you want to look back at your table of conversion factors. Is there something that goes from U.S. volume units over to, to metric volume units? And you'll see there is one that goes from metric to U.S. I've got one liter equals 33.8 fluid ounces. And so that's the one we can use to go between the metric system and the U.S. system. In order to cancel out with the ounces, I'm going to have to get gallons over into ounces. And then when I'm into ounces, I can go ahead and use this conversion factor to take the final step. So I need to go gallons to ounces. Well, we know in one gallon, there are four quarts. All right, so gallons are gone now. In four quarts, what do you know about four quarts? I bet you a lot of you might know that uh, couple, either one or two things. That two quarts is 64 ounces, or you could also use in here for a conversion factor that one quart is 32 ounces. Some of you might know that. If you didn't know that, maybe we'd stick with, okay, um, there's one quart is two pints, all right? And so those are quarts. We have pints now. And then we could go pints to cups and then cups to ounces. But I'll bet you a lot of you might know that a pint is 16 ounces. I know that because if you go to a tavern, I think a pint is 16 ounces of beer. Not that I've ever been to a tavern before. So one pint equals a 16 ounce mug of cold beer. Somebody told me once. So there's my pints gone and I have ounces. That's a, that will give me, if I did my calculation, the number of ounces per gallon. That number, if you happen to know it, it's, it turns out there's 128 ounces in a gallon, if you multiplied that out. Now we've got ounces, we can go to liters. There's 33.8 ounces in one liter. So now my ounces cancel, and I have my final answer here. I've got, and let me just write out what I would type in my calculator. So I'd, I have 4 times 2 times 16. And on the bottom, I've got to divide by 33.8. And really, you don't need to show me on your papers the 4 times 2 times 16 divided by 33.8 once you practice it and get it down. This work up above is all the work I really need to see. And, uh, and you don't need to show me your, your calculation. Just go ahead and do it on your calculator. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to give you a few digits here, and then we can figure out about rounding. 3.7, 2249. All right, way too many digits for us. That's how many uh, liters are in a gallon. Now, let's look at rounding. If we wanted to go with two significant digits, we'd be here. If we want to go with three, we'd be here. And for conversion factors, we like three. So I'm going to use three significant digits. I'm going to look to the digit to the right of that, and I'll use that for my rounding point. And so this, it looks like we're going to use 3.79 liters equals one gallon. All right. So that's the number we want to put on our sheet. Now we need to be a little bit careful though when we're doing setting up these conversion factors. The number we started with is three significant digits, so that means there's error potentially in this eight digit here. This digit might be a seven, it might be a nine. Um, so that's where our error resides in the last digit. And if it turns out that this digit is a nine, and we bumped up the denominator a little bit, it might actually bump us down to a uh, 3.78. So really, if you want to be very accurate about this, we'd take this out to another digit out here to make sure that our three significance down here are a little bit more accurate. So we probably ought to still look this up online um, someplace and get a few more digits just to make sure it actually is 3.79. Alright, let's take 100 pounds and convert it into both grams and kilograms. Well, 100 pounds is units of weight, 
and we're let's assume we're on Earth here, and that we do have a nice conversion factor that that relates on Earth pounds to kilograms, and we know that one kilogram is 2.20 pounds. All right, our pounds cancel, and all we need to do is take. And this actually gets us to kilograms, so we end, we end up getting this value first, which is fine. 100 divided by 2.2, and it turns out that's 45.45 repeating kilograms. Let's round this to, I don't know, is this, are you saying you're about 100 pounds? Exactly 100 pounds? I don't know, I'm going to use two significant digits on this. So I'm going to say that's about 45 kilograms. And if you want to show that it's about, you can use a squiggly equal sign that says you've rounded a little bit and you're letting people know that's about correct. And so 100 pounds is about equal to 45 kilograms. There's your answer. How do we get into to grams? Easy. We take 45 kilograms over 1, and you would multiply it by the conversion factor. 1 kilogram equals how many grams? Well, it's a thousand grams per kilogram. All right, kilograms are gone. So 45 times a thousand equals 45,000, rounded to two significant digits. So that's how much a hundred pound person weighs, 45,000 grams. Easier way to do this is kilograms. K just replace with its SI prefix value, 45, and a K means times 1,000, or times 10 to the third. And that's even the faster way. A K, you just replace it with what it actually means. K equals times 1,000. Simple as that. And that's 45,000 grams.